Are you shots with them? Uh, so uh, this is what's going to be happening for the rest of this meeting, obviously. Absolutely, that. Yeah. I'm just going to be standing here wondering what people are saying. Uh, or a podcast. <laughs> or how you are planning to sell me? Kamsamida, Krigo, uh, Chom. I know Kamsamida anyway, at least. Chom, throughout the younger man in Baya Soya, Hango Goro, Toke Bosa. Ah, uh, Kuyang, Internet to Robe Soya. Honda Concrete. Chincha, Honda Soya. Is there a Hango Chingo of Soya? A Hango Chingo, Hana of Soya. Hana is Hana back up, sir. Ah. Wow. Um, um, Hangugo we Bosa. Um, Hangugo Munuago, uh, Chagi, Ilgudo, Kurongo, Guanshi, Missoso, Hangugo, Bilgi, Chijaki Soya. Odioga, Odioga, Anjoy. Odio? Ne, child Motoro Soya. Ah, is there Hangug drama, um, Bogo Soya? Animida. <laughs> Wait, uh, sorry, I will get back to you. you me. Uh, mm, me, I will just be here. Uh, uh, managing. Uh, uh, wow, wow. Chincha. <laughs> Check it uh, um, out. Um, ore Pewasa? Ore Tonga? No, yeah, Ore Tonga. In 2017. Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, anyways, um, really, really nice to meet you and welcome to the show. I am mean, sorry, go learn Korean so you can have a more robust <laughs> conversation. Yes, yes, man, that's all. Uh, thank you. Well, would the episode do a bunch of you now? Ajikyo. Ajikyo. Ah, Genchana, Genchana. Ah, is that Shijaki the Dwell? No, Shijaki the Tayo. Hi there. Welcome to the More Civil Podcast. This is a podcast for Blacks, Asians, and those who love them. I am Mo, and I am your host, ready to spark your curiosity as I take you on this adventurous ride of exploring cultures through the stories of my guests from all over the world. On this show, we get really personal, discussing salient issues that are relevant to our contemporary age and also building community around them as our guests exercise courage and vulnerability in sharing their life's experiences, we hope that in turn, you are inspired by them and that you get the courage in it to set your own stories free. Enjoy the ride and thank you so much for listening. All right, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. This is Mo and... I am Ide. And today we have... Uh, we're going to be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, and I mean, they clearly feels that number today because we're going to be talking about something that, until he's interested in it, I'm not going to stop bugging him about. So today we'll be talking with a dynamic young young lady who describes herself as a struggling writer. I mean, who isn't, right? A digital entrepreneur and a cultural enthusiast. She is a Korean speaker. And shout out to my former assistant Ella Ho for. Um, Letting me know about this, you know, young lady. I actually saw a video of her on, on Instagram, you know, doing some skits in Korean. She's based in Nigeria and she's one of the up and coming Nigerians who have adopted Korea, the Korean culture as a second culture and exploring the culture through languages. Without further ado, please join us in welcoming Esther Nekanana to the podcast. <laughs> Uh, it's been raining a lot in Lagos, right? <laughs> All right, so um, I guess we can just get started with asking you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you grew up. Uh, okay, so Joe, I'm, um, you know, a content creator, um, Korean speaker, Korean teacher, and art creator. 
I grew up like in Lagos right now. So I grew up in a boy state. I was born and brought up there. And I, you know, went to all my schools there, like my primary school, secondary school, university. So uh right now I live in Lagos, yes. Okay. Um what do you mean by you know, being a struggling writer. I think I immediately this is something that he would also <laughs> want to ask. <laughs> okay. Because almost so, like, I feel um, like it's like, a, it's like a tautology because every writer <laughs> is a struggling person in its own right. Well, don't let me redefine that, what that means for you. But I'm just curious to know why you, yeah. you describe yourself as that. Mm, so I, I, I was officially taught how to write in like 2014, yeah. So, um, I've been, like I wrote fictions at that time and I hey, oh your your work is really good and all that. So but at the point I stopped writing and then when I picked it up again, I had to write as a freelancer, you know. So I tend to get the job done sometimes. But then I feel really anxious writing. I don't really like writing, I prefer reading. But since writing is necessary, it helps me build my confidence, it helps me put my you know thoughts straight. Because I'm someone that gets anxious a bit. So if I have to write, I get really anxious to write, especially when I have a deadline. So I really struggle to put, like to write. So I tend to hear that I'm a good writer, but I don't think so myself. So, <laughs> so that is why I say I'm struggling. I, I, mean, they were I, didn't that. That I, I didn't get that bit about you don't think for yourself. How do you mean? I don't think I'm a good writer myself. Like, oh, I don't right. think. I, I get yeah. what you're saying. So I was trying to say, notice how I didn't even say I was a writer in my introduction. <laughs> I did notice. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I, I find that know. interesting, though, because when you said something earlier about you, you hate writing, and it reminds me of this quote that... Um, I hate writing, but I have loved to have written. <laughs> yeah. You ever heard that one, Esther? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's yeah. popular so I thought that's the... where you were going to go with when you said that, I thought that was what you're going to finish with, but obviously you went no. you went a bit different. In I have copied that saying to say I hate traveling, but I love to have traveled. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I feel like you like traveling, but let's leave that for. I hate the position. act of see, it's like airport security, lugging your luggage about. If I can just teleport, the experience is yeah, oh, but getting there. That. What's not to love? Uh, the long layovers. The strange faces at the airport, the potential contagion with, with, within the pandemic. Don't let me start with all my points. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's all part of the experience. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess. But can we take it? If we could take away the stressful bits, it would be more interesting, I think. Oh, yeah, that's the best fun of That's why you keep doing it over and over again. I think it's kind of like childbirth. <laughs> why did I even compare to childbirth? <laughs> like, you go through the pains, but it never stops you from having more kids, right? Yeah. The expresses are always so good that you you're like okay yeah I can cope with this hassle of getting there yeah. whatever yeah yeah until yeah. we walk on that telly you know um, portation device Doctor Who style a TARDIS <laughs> yeah keep if wishes and horses right I know right. <laughs> I, I I was I I I I think I'd like to ask a bit more about the writing, but I don't want to I don't want to spend too much of this episode. I knew you're gonna pick up on that. I was actually waiting for you that. to interject because I am well, day, you know. <laughs> I am day is a good writer, even though he doesn't think himself as a coach. Like he's really informed my writing as well. Especially Aww. when you talk about that struggling, it was almost like a father for him to just tell you, tell me how you've been writing. How do you like? I can imagine him wanting to just have a separate podcast episode on this topic alone. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> we probably should. I mean, I, I suppose for me, the, the main thing is, the main thing is, um, you know, when you say you're a struggling writer, um, yes. the part of me, it, it sounds a bit like when I hear people say they have a bad memory, which is okay. almost never true. It's just people tend to overestimate other people's memories and then they compare their memory to that and then they think they have a bad memory. So I know lots of people think they have a bad memory because they have to write things. And I'm like, how do you think everybody else is remembering stuff? The, it's by writing exactly yeah. so so you don't have a bad memory you just you're overestimating other people and yes obviously you can train your memory but that's not having a bad memory it's just mm. you've not trained it and i think yeah. writing is like that a lot where people will often say i'm struggling with writing i do agree and i think with people you. have this idea that good writers just have things come out of their head fully formed right which... i agree with you because okay sorry <laughs> no go ahead 
No, so once once I really focused on reading books on how to write well, blah 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 blah, and practice a lot, my writing got so better that even when I tweet things, people are like, I really like the way you tweet, like you write well, you know, stuff like that. But then when I don't practice my writing or work on it, I yeah. tend to say, oh, I'm very poor at writing and stuff. <laughs> There's a book that um, yeah, that's that helps me. Craft. Yeah, it is a craft. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Bird by Bird. Yeah, by Anne Lamott. Anne Lamott is one of my favorite writers, and okay, she has yeah she has informed my. Part. I don't know if I've told you about her. I am mean, you probably you heard me. Have actually, I've read Bird by Bird. She's she's really good. I knew Bird really by Bird first because of the the most famous essay from it. The one on shitty first draft. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's I think, because one of the yeah. things I used to struggle with as a writer was writing about other characters, because our stories are not really our stories, right? Sometimes you have other characters who you just want to protect in a way, even though they've done really bad things. So there's something she said about you own. In case you're struggling with this, which I, I, I don't know why I'm even assuming that, but there's something she said that really set me free was. You own everything that happened to you. Tell your stories. If people wanted you to write warmly about them, they should have behaved better. And my goodness, okay. I ran with that and I've never looked back. Because <laughs> I'm like, this is my story, right? It's going to be biased because it's my story. Not like you're throwing everybody under the bus, but don't be, don't hold on to that emotional bit of, I'm not ready, I don't want to offend people. Like, just, you know, just write it. And you can and, and you apologize you can write later. your own story too, if you have a problem with my story. Exactly. Like, with that here <laughs> i'm not stopping you <laughs> anyway we should we should we should talk more about ahead, writing dude. and uh, like do yeah just go for it but i think writing as a whole i think that would be a separate conversation we can have on the podcast yeah. because yeah. i really knows that i've struggled with it and there was something you sent to me and i think i told you about that that 10 tips you know writing daily um not everything to share publicly i really remember that note you shared with me many years ago and every now oh, and then i have vaguely. a reminder of it <laughs> see you wrote <laughs> So, you know how your brother would say, so the person that popped and the person that packed it, you know, one one person remembers it more than the other. But it is, yeah. I have packed this poop and it's, it's staying with me, even though it's not poop, it's really good. Now, let's, let's do this big digression because this is one of the reasons why I brought you on the show. Okay. You are learning Korean. And at the time of this yeah. recording, I saw on your Instagram page, because I did a little bit of snooping on you, you actually have <laughs> a, you're creating a WhatsApp class to teach yeah. people Korean. Korean. Yeah. Now, these are like two, you've almost like you've um, um, ascended to a deeper level because okay. to learn a language and to take it as yours is one thing, right? So yes. now, you know, um, take it to a level where you're teaching people. There's a saying in Korean, which is that they say like, Hasan Hagora, meaning you have gone up the mountain, now you're descending, there's nothing yeah. else you can teach you, right? Yeah. And I, I guess my very first question would be, what inspired okay. your love for the Korean language? How did it get started? Uh, I don't I don't think there was a particular thing that inspired my love. Like I d I don't think it was one thing. Like I think it was many things that inspired my love. First of all, I really, really liked the beauty of the country. Like when I watched the movie for the first time, I saw the quality of the though the quality of the camera was good and everything like the environment was really serene and calming so when i watched their traditional movies too i was like okay so these people share some sort of culture with Igbo people like the culture of respect hard work confidence independence you know stuff like that so i really got interested but the language is since the language is really smooth and I also learned that my favorite actor could not speak English. <laughs> I took it. I took it like, you know, as a don't point. Don't tell me it's Limi Ho. I, of course it's Limi Ho. What do you mean? Don't tell me. I'm not just talking about him. This is Isn't that the girl we're just talking about? Of course. I always judge. I'm sorry. He cannot, I'm sorry. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. That guy cannot act to save his life. Even though in Pachinko, it seems like he's redeeming himself. I think he's more of the optics. He really looks good on camera. And I've been following him for years. I, I actually don't like to argue this. I will say in Pachinko, he's not the best actor. He's not the best actor, he's actor in everything. He, there are better actors, but he's he's cute. I mean, he's an opa. Even though I'm older than him, but Koreans will say, you know, just sang him on opa jana. Like if he's cute, he's always gonna be an opa to me. But he's cute. He's he's tall. His his height is actually height. What, like what's opa? No, Sorry, opa. Opa. opa hold on. Let me let me explain opa to him. Opa is I, a term for opa. not just to me, but I'm the audience surrogate here. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, that's true. Opa in Korea, it's a very dicey word to explain, but 
the raw meaning is brother and you usually say that as a female to an older man or older pr- 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 um, person but also in a relationship you can call your boyfriend or pa like, if you want to be cute like you know oh, pa like you know use egg. i mean i'm never doing the egg very well like you know buy this for me such all you know so opa mm. is just and for me that i'm older than you mean who obviously i shouldn't be calling him opa even he should be calling me nuna but there's a saying yeah. that if they are cute, they're all opa. So, chao sengi mion, opa jana. So, <laughs> anyways, um, you, you wanted to say something. I interrupt you. Like, yeah, I-, I was trying to say that I don't really like to argue the point of Lee Minho not being a, uh, not being a good actor because well probably it could be that you know i'm biased towards him because i really like him but then again i don't also like when people say that somebody like an actor or a movie is overrated because if you say this person or this movie is overrated does it mean that every other person that like it like every other person that found it you know to have a good quality or something doesn't mean yeah. that those other people are stupid and you know no. the particular person i think this thing is overrated you know like okay. is that a bad thing fair so argument I've like, if I've met, like 10 really? people Okay, four of them have said that, or yeah. three of them have said that Lee Min Ho is not a good actor. Yeah. Understand? And then the other seven. So I cannot say because I don't know. I, I, no, no. Do I, I see it? It's a fair argument. Do I see it? Art is very subjective, right? What I yeah. like might not be what you like. But exactly. I don't just single. I don't. I don't. Single, remember, I've been watching Korean movies for about twelve years now, and I've seen yeah. more than my body weight in Korean movies and dramas collectively. Mm. And when I think about Lee Min Ho, I'm not thinking about singular movies or dramas he's done. I'm thinking about cluster of acts, okay. you know. And I think maybe he doesn't. They don't pick him. They don't pick the right script for him to act in, because mm. he's always rich. He's always the rich spot. Well, and... if somebody is like qualif- like if someone is really good at one particular character, I don't think that is necessary for him to go to others. For example, Ijungi. Ijungi is always the savior of the show. So I don't see people saying that he's, you know, he's. But he's a good actor. Word? Don't the, don't mix the drink. Look, look at Paxton here. Well, Paxton here. Being, I, but I think being typecast though is is limiting for any actor. That's it. That's it. You like, like what I'm saying range. that it's, it's only it's when like, it comes to Lin that people say, "Oh, Lin no, 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 no." They say they say that about Paxton here. Even Song Hye Kyo, you know, the one that did. Um, now we are breaking up. Her yeah. character is always the one that falls in love and then breaks up, and she's always having. Well, I feel you know, like love, this is, also, also, also. Sometimes they don't really have a choice over the script. They, they I get, like they, I get, I get. Yeah, but you can always so decline it. You know, this is why I like. I like as, actors that have broad range of acting. You know, you can act as, as for example, outside that to for this. G song, G song, Gopa. Yeah, G song. G song is good. Yes. yes. Oh, oh G song. Joseph yes. is good. Good. He's yeah. So G song actually. is good. Song Hakyu is there, there's so many of them I can keep you know again it's broad range of acting yeah so we can just move on because we are oh, not it's like okay that. we don't have to agree <laughs> you don't have to agree but it's cute to see that you know there's another Lee Min Ho fan there's literally a clubhouse group that is like anti Lee Min Ho and they talk about him so badly I wouldn't join on that bad one I think I think he gets it how sorry we we digress a lot but so the movies and everything really um got you interested yeah. in Korean language that's really interesting to yeah. see but it's one thing to watch, you know, we grew up watching a lot of Indian movies, right? It's one thing to watch movies and dramas. Mm. It's another thing to say, let me go learn the language. What was that inflection point for you that, or the water, watershed moment for you that, that made it seem like, okay, Korean is the language for me? Yeah, I really like this question because, you know, so when, when we're in school, I used to watch these Korean dramas with my friends. So when we come to school the next day, I'll be like, ha, as in, and young upa, you know, my, I have this mixture of male friends, like a group. So we will tell each other new words that we learn, like, upa, nyong, big upa, yo, you know, blah, 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 blah. So when we watched, um, has strings So we were talking about when Park Shin Hai con- confessed to the guy that she loved. That she liked him. So she said, Chowahe, Chowandago. Then my friend, Sumto, he was like, um, that Chowahe, Chow, like Chowandago means I don't like you. Why Chowahe means I like you? I said, I said no, I saw it correctly. And he, she said, I like you. I said, I, said I liked, I liked you. it. Mm-hmm. So the argument got so heated, we had to Google it. You understand? How do you say I like you in Korean? How do you say I said I like you in Korean? So that was how it started. So when we, when we checked those things, I was like, so I saw so many other words, like, this is how you say I love you. This is how you say thank you. So that time, each time I wanted to say, okay, let's go and buy something, or I'm hungry, or let's go and eat lunch, or let's go to the canteen, I would check it on Google. 
and it will translate it for me. I will tell my friends. They will be like, "Eh, stay here, biakwa." You know, you have come, you know, something like that. So that was how it started for me. I now saw that oh, I can actually learn this language from online like this, you know. So I would check those words, you know. But then how I started learning the language like properly after cramming, you know, those short phrases and everything. Somebody from Chile that was following through me, you know. Like we contact, we connected on Twitter because of Limi Hoff and Gelin. She said she was working in Korea. And I was like, how are you working in Korea? And, you know, you are not, you are not, as in, I just asked her, she was like, she's, she has a working holiday visa. I said, is that possible for Nigerians? She just sent me the website to check. So when I went to the government's website, like Ministry of, I think it's Ministry of Tourism or something. They had, they had, um, an introduction to the Korean language. So they listed the alphabet, like the 24 basic alphabet. And I just learned it there. And then I just fell in Korean. That was just it. Mm. Impressive. And I want to, before I immediately ask this next question, I want to piggyback on what you talked about, um, how you really like, like what drew you to the culture as a whole. And even though you mentioned it specifically um, as like the the reason you gave was the similarities it had with the Igbo culture, culture, which is that yeah. that's your culture. It's funny that for yeah. me, I also took that as you know the similarity they had with the Yoruba culture. You know our tribe. Oh, wow. as well. Yes, the yeah. respect, the, you know, the use of honorifics, our love yeah. for just life. You know, even as a Nigerian, they have such a a, a national pride. You know, they they are yeah. they're really proud people. You know, when I say pride i'm not talking about it it could be negative but in this context i mean like you know just their love for their country and if you know about their history and how they were colonized you know um and the things they went through with japan and all that it's so it's so it's so good to see just how they've redeemed them and they've owned their own identity and even their love for food you know yeah. you know and and celebrating true food the family familiar piety you know respect for your elders and all that so i guess the commonality is that there's so many things between the and i use nigerian culture even though it's so heterogeneous and i hate to put it that way but i can definitely see how even though you're Igbo and yoruba we belong to yeah. nigeria but we can see how aspects of this culture really re- resonate with our own culture as well Exactly. So when, when I wrote, like, I, I think I wrote an essay on why I loved Korean culture once. And I did mention their history of resilience and independence because we, Igbo people face something similar as well. So yeah, yeah. it was also part of it. Okay. Yeah. We, need, we need to get that link to that essay for the show notes, I think. Uh, it was a video essay that I submitted for the um, Korean speaking contest that happened in 2020, and I won. So I think I will send a link. It should be on online Instagram. somewhere, though, shouldn't it? Yes, it's on. Yeah, it's on my yeah, yeah. So please, I, um, if you'd be happy to share with us, so that we can um, share yeah. with. Um, no, no problem with, at all. Yeah, I will do with that the, with our audience as well. Yeah. Um, well, my question is sort of connected to what um, what you were talking about already. Um, the similarities you found between Korean and Igbo culture, and um, and I am okay. big, well, obviously I'm I'm like I said, you know, I'm sort of the outsider here. But Tolani has shared a lot of what she was just saying about the similarities she's found between uh, well, Korean and Yoruba Korean. culture, but which yes. I think I see because I, I'm very interested in culture as well, um, and in in okay. differences between Western and non-Western cultures. Um, and I think that a lot of we non-Western cultures, um, so for instance, I've, I've got a lot in common. I find with my friends from India, from from Korea, from well, I, I don't have friends from Korea actually, from Japan um, and China um, and India, okay. and Pakistan, um, and I found that we connect a lot more on a lot of things that we don't have in common with, say, people who grew up here, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I was okay. wondering what what things it was that you found um, striking in particular. So you, I know you mentioned respect, um, and Solani has talked about food. I'm wondering if there's anything else um, that we haven't talked about or, or that we've no. talked about, but maybe for you had a lot of extra weight. I, I don't think so. so. Generally, it's just those things I've mentioned. And their food also looks interesting. So <laughs> I don't think there's any other thing specifically. All right, you, you. I guess the, the the other question for me is um with so with with the culture in general. Like, have you read up on the history as well? Because that's something I've also um learned 
um, a bit, you know, but their history is so vast. Yeah, their history. So that's is something really you found vast, interesting yeah. as well. And what what have you found most interesting there? If so, about their history. Yeah. You know how you know though they were getting oppressed and everything, they never backed down. You know they had a lot of uprisings, and I, like I really respect that about them. Yeah. Mm. Is there anything you wish maybe you saw more of in like Nigerians or Igbo people, or that you know that you found that you find attractive about like? Okay, so cultural preservation. Yeah. Yep, cultural preser- that, Koreans are really good at cultural something we, we don't do well at. Yeah, so I really wish I really wish we could preserve our, and transfer our culture more, you know, to our next generations. I feel like the Igbo language is dying off. We don't really know our history well, you know, stuff like that. But Koreans are very, very good at this. And they still have books that were written, like, yeah. by their king, like the king that... Like they, they have mm-hmm. a lot of things that they've preserved from their histories, but we don't have that in Nigeria. So I really wish we could do something more, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you, Nari. And another thing I was going to joke about was going to be good governance because they they fought hard for their country to really build it up to what it is right now. And I think it's easier for and I use right. this word very carefully. It's easier for Korea to be quite as good with cultural preservation and holding their government accountable because remember it's a very small country and it's very homogeneous okay. there's only one language being spoken there yes, whereas I in Nigeria see. we're almost yeah. like a mixture a potpourri of all kinds of cultures so it's left to the I guess the individual cultures to preserve their language you know, and, and all that because I'm sure there's some, cultu- some I heard about some languages I think from the north or I forget what part of the what particular states that have totally died out maybe there's only one okay, person that you have never no okay, there's only maybe one, one person out. alive left you know speaking that language so <laughs> nigeria is super heterogeneous yeah. and to compare it to korea i mean I, I get that desire and all that but i think there's going to be so okay. much more burden on the individual tribes who want to fight yeah. to preserving their culture because the government wouldn't do it <laughs> i mean we yeah, don't i've actually like, never rights, thought but... about it like that I so think, I've never I think thought, also... oh, Nigeria is, Nigeria is a heterogeneous country, so it Super, would be difficult yeah. for us to preserve our cultures and everything. But now like, that I hear it, it really makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of, um, because of the, how I put it, no, I see, you know, Korea has gone through a lot of displacement, right? I mean, they were occupied by Japan okay. for so long, they couldn't have their identity, because I've read vastly about their history. And yeah, yeah, yeah. no matter how much they've preserved, all those things they've preserved, they've also lost a lot more. But I think what, what yeah, I really like yeah. about them is that they have specific government um, offices and initiatives that, you know, um, that target, you know, cultural preservation. And I always thought, we'll take, for example, the alleyway, yeah. which is what, you know, why you and I can be learning Korean and knowing about Korea, was yeah. a deliberate move by the government to sell their soft power to the whole world. They have um, government-funded um, departments yeah. that promote K-pop, you know, provides venture capitalist, capitalist funding, venture capital funding to you know young entrepreneurs yeah, to, to think about entertainment companies. exactly yeah. so um nigeria has <laughs> let's not talk about nothing. yeah I was, I was actually going to say this exact thing yeah i think yeah just you know off of that the the, the thing that i find interesting is the role of leadership in making these things possible, and the fact that the reason Tolani and you Neka, um, speak Korean at all now is because there's been these films, there's been these shows, there's been this music, and all of that has been driven specifically by the government um, as a sort of a deliberate. It's it's, it's a form of soft tourism. Um, well, not tourism. Not tourism. Um, yeah. There's the word engineering. Used. Soft power? No, no, not engineering. Soft power? It's, it's, yeah, soft power. Yeah. But it's it's yeah. actually a sort of reverse tourism, actually, where instead of inviting people to come to... So tourism is always out. about yeah. come yeah. to a, top, come to our country and experience our country. It's almost a reverse of that, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, you don't even need to come to our country. We will bring our country to you. We will bring our culture to you. Yeah. Just stay in your living room and we will bring our culture. And we'll but the end, the end product of that is yeah, that you, come, yeah, you go to Korea. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. But I'm saying it's it's it's, yeah, it's flipping that model on its head, right? Where, where the goal was always to bring people. It's now a sort of 
it's a push rather than a pull. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You're pushing it out and then that pulls people in rather than you trying to pull people in directly. Directly, yeah. But then the reason why that's interesting to me is that in Nigeria, and this is again to sort of contrast, we've actually had that happen without the interference of the government, without the without any help from the government. This is just no, no, Nigerians, no. Mm-hmm. right? Like just yesterday, Bonaboy sold out Madison Square Garden. I was in. <laughs> and the government did not. But for me, that's like, imagine if we had the leadership, how yep. much more we would do. If, when you consider that, look at what we're doing without any leadership, just yep. off of people's individual hard work and trying to push things yep. trying to make things work and trying to make things happen and look at what nigeria is already doing in terms of that soft power yeah imagine what would have happened with leadership and that's what i think korea is a model a great model of and, and i think the, the the biggest thing about the country that i find William is because i wrote a, a piece on medium about the economic development and what nigeria can learn from south korea would be they have no natural resources. You can keep tilling the soil in Korea. You're not going to hit anything, you know, worth <laughs> value. The people are their natural resources. But once, um, you know, Japanese occupied, when they when the occupation was ended, when, you know, they lost the World, world War II, and Korea was just a backwater place. Nobody wanted to go there. In fact, the soldiers then, they were like, three things that can kill you will be dysentery, cholera, and in Korea. Like, you are bound to die in Korea from, you know, bad sanitation practices. But they sent a lot of their miners and their nurses to then um, East Germany to go work and then send the money back home. I mean, it's you not know what a lot of us in the diaspora are doing in Nigeria right now. But right. they took all of that and they were able to build their country and and get get it to what it is right now. And guess what? Korea is a super super power, super super power country. They went from being on the recipient list, you know, from the United Nations for to be yeah. on the donor list. And only very few countries countries in the world have been able, able to turn to that, that you know, to that. And um again, I think that the presidents have not always been quite um fortunate in the sense that they had very uh, Machiavellian principles, but it has worked. And I and I'm very sensitive when I talk about it. Because one or two things happen to their government. Either they go to jail or they kill them. You know, uh, but it's just remember in recent years that they've not put any of their presidents into jail because the corruption is still really bad in that country. But guess what? Um, yeah. They have the, the fastest internet in the world. Um, there's a very high literacy um, level. Even when the bombs yeah. were going off in Korea, mothers were sending their kids to school. Uh, it's one of the plastic surgery um, mecca in the world. Of course, K-pop, book, yeah. like K-pop, K-drama, um, the paid advertisement. My house is full of Korean stuff. Like. I am a Samsung. Food. I'm a Samsung brand, like head for life, you know. At the point, my husband was like, "We're not gonna get another Samsung brand, are we?" You know. So um, they sold me, uh, <laughs> and, and yeah. I, I, so I, I definitely get what you mean about just the things you see in the country and how it makes you feel very hopeful, at least a bit for Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next question I was gonna ask after we come back from the commercial break. <laughs> 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 you know, is uh, is is again is related to what you just said. I think, which is um, um, there's a word you used just now, Tolani, and I've forgotten it. Um, just in context to what? Um, oh, soft okay. power. No, not soft no, power. Not soft just power. literally, just in the last minutes. What was it related? What was the context? So I can help you. Oh, yeah, so the, the government and the, yeah, the sensitivity question. That's oh what yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, being sensitive. Was. Okay, but yeah. So, you know, you do the IG skits, parodying, like, aspects of Korean culture. Um, so, one, how do you think about that in light of being culturally mm-hmm. sensitive? Because um, I think that's something that I think you're very brave to do, first of all, because that sort of thing, I would always feel very nervous. So, just how did you get to the point of doing it? And how do you think about the manage balancing sensitivity with curiosity and all of that Mm, so i don't know because i feel like this is some this is me appreciating korean culture like the aspects of korean culture that i love i don't think like i'm just replicating the things i see in korean dramas i don't feel like i'm invading their like i'm being rude or doing cultural appropriation or something like that so this is why I think I I don't I don't know if they would think differently, but I do have some few Korean followers and they've never complained about any of this. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna ask about 
like what your Korean followers say? Because I'm pretty sure you'd have attracted a few at this point. Oh, they do say they they are always asking me when are you going to upload new videos? <laughs> like they like it's always funny to them, and they are always very impressed that you know that, that the fact like like at my Korean, you know. So I have one who likes Bonner Boy, so Ooh, he he nice subscribes my. <laughs> Yeah, how, did you get started? how did you get started? Like, where did the idea come from? <laughs> Was it from watching Mr. Macaroni? Okay, so, um, <laughs> exactly. So, Macaroni, Macaroni does this mm, daddy word skit. So, Mommy Wa, the girl that plays Mommy Wa, she's, she loves Korean culture. Like, she loves watching Korean drama. So, she used to do, make videos of her trying, like, saying different popular Korean words, like, Annyeong, Sarangye, you know stuff like that and then she writes the romanization like the way it's like it sounds in english on the screen then she writes that and then she writes the english um translation so when i see the videos i like them but then the romanizations are not correct like she doesn't use the right oh, i hear romanizations sound. yeah uh yeah, I hear, yeah, exactly. So I was like, I, I sent her a DM. I was like, I can teach you Korean alphabet so that, you know, you can write the correct things when you translate your whatever it is you're saying. You know, I was like, okay, that's cool. So I started teaching her the alphabet. But because she didn't have time, she couldn't really learn properly. So she, one day she was like, you could come to my house. We could do a shoot, you know. So when I went over, it was easier for us to... um get ideas like what like put two heads together you know something like that so because i like if i i knew more korean words you know so i would we would bring the korean words together and then i can help her with the translation you know something like that was just how it started from so people started getting interested and then we just partnered up to be making korean content but she's the chief at like creative like she's always the one with the ideas me i just execute that's nice. So it's a classic case of like, if what you want isn't out there, build it. Is what it sounds like. Yeah. I had a I had a follow up question to that. So around the you know talk of I guess sensitivity, um, last year was it? I don't know if you know this um, group, um, Penomeko, that bolo song. You know, that's like a bolo. It's like Afro K-pop. Uh, have you heard that song? Oh, there's someone okay. they talk. They said Omali Chinese. You all haven't heard the song. I, I did. Please oh, don't be it's a, There was a drama around. <laughs> it's a bop. It, it, it sparked a conversation on Twitter and on um, on um, on Clubhouse. Now, not to put you on the spot because I don't think I don't want to make you. I don't want to tag you as a Korean Nigerian ambassador because it's also a conversation I keep having with one okay. of my friends because they asked me that question. So. That conversation, let's put okay. it on one hand. On the second hand, just the past right. Grammy Award, um, the the award given to like the best reggae album was to a group of white men, and I use that word, white people like in West Virginia, who won Reggae Award, mm. and Jamaicans had like a lot to say about their culture being co-opted in a way. Now well, with globalization they never for all these years. Yeah, exactly. Which you know, this these guys are from, you know. They're not Jamaican. They're like, you know, a pair of white people um, winning Best Reggae Award. Yeah. And, you know, um, and I've listened to a couple of their songs. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> but that's not even the argument here. We know that with the effect okay. of globalization, cultures are meant that one of the downsides is that we might tend to co-opt certain parts of other post cultures our yeah. own. What fear do you have, if any, of, you know, us getting to that point where Nigerian, because Afrobeat and all that, We've seen, you know, someone like Beyonce, and I know a lot of Nigerians that, you know, talk against how she's just taking aspects of our culture and branding it as hers and all that. Do you have a, any fear of just, you know, that aspect of, you know, your your Korean love and your, you being Nigerian, getting to that point where people just try to, like, blend them up without really appreciating it? Are you afraid that, you know, if K-pop, like, moves to Afrobeat now, it becomes just another, you know, um, meld that is not fully appreciating the original source? I don't know if that question makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense, but I don't have that kind of fear. I feel like you can never take over the original completely. Like, Americans giving those people that award is, like, very, very biased. So there is no way that that, their reggae song would be better than Jamaican. Or more original than the ones from Jamaica. So I don't think that, I don't feel like 
any artist, even Beyonce, can take um, Afrobeat and turn it to the arts. You know, I don't have that fear, honestly. Okay, okay. fair enough. Thank you. Um, this next question I would like to ask you, and I know maybe your immediate might have this question to be. So I grew up in Nigeria, like you know, and I learned French for. I've learned French now. I learned French for about seven years, right? And I got to a point where I could speak it conversationally, but I wasn't very confident in it. Um, I went to French school, took French classes and all that. But I think what was missing, and I didn't know what was missing until I started learning Korean, was the cultural aspect of it. Because I didn't really make French friends. I did not watch any French shows. I did not... I mean, French cooking... French cooking, I think it's there's a style of French cooking is infused in such a um, insipid way that we all use it without even ascribing to French culture. Yeah, it's not very good. distinct to me, right? Because you know, French is culinary. Like French culinary is, is, you know, if you go to a French school, the style of cooking is really, really based on a lot of French, you know, methods. But that said, there was no no attachment to the country or the language or the people. No, no, not the language. The, the people. The you know, just the things that you do that will make learning a language and a culture, um, the cultural bits of it, you know, really, really well appreciated. And I didn't, so when I stopped learning French, I actually thought that language, second language or third language acquisition was not going to be for me because I felt like I'd failed at French. Like I was so good, if I could even pray in French and all that. But so my question for you is this, what, how would, for those that might be struggling with language, can you speak to the importance of just, not just speaking a language and learning it but even exploring other aspects of the culture as well. That's one question. The second bit to be, apart from learning the language, what other parts of the culture are you exploring? Mm. Okay, so I've tweeted a lot of times that you can't just say you want to learn a language and you're not interested in anything about the people who own that language or anything about their country. You just want to speak their language in, say, America. You're in America and you want to learn Italian and you just want to cram Italian and then speak Italian in America. You don't, as in, you don't even want to learn anything about, you know, winemaking, uh, mozzarella pizza like that so i feel like if you are if you pick a little bit of interest in the culture of the people and the people you know it will be better like it will be easier for you to as in immerse in the language you know and also you know learn is better because when you really when you interact with those people who you are speaking their language they also have a lot of corrections for you and they're also really always really happy to help you out so in areas where you might be struggling because no matter how good your teacher is, or you can never like, you cannot naturalize in a language that you're not interested in the culture. You know, this is what I feel like. So I feel like it, now that I want to start learning Spanish, because I got a Spanish course. So I feel like I'm I'm going to like have to pick a little bit of interest in Spanish culture. And to Wait, answer your question, how many languages? About... Sorry, you, sorry, just <laughs> how many I, languages I just... do you speak? Yeah, but you're about to say something. Just Korean, no, just Korean. And French, don't say I just Korean, no, that's a whole new script. You speak English okay, sorry. clearly. Like Korean. <laughs> Wait, okay, so I speak Iji language, which is my mother tongue. What's it? What's that language? Igbo? Iji language, Izi from Eboin. Oh, I didn't know that. Izi. Okay. Izi. Yeah. First, is it I Z I? I Z Z I. There's a double Z? Yes. You guys have Z in your, in your alphabet. Iji. Uh, yeah, is it a tribe as well? A people or just the language name? Can you say the Iji yeah, people? It's the tribe of people. Yes, Iji people. It's Iji people. It's even like if you go, if you say Iji language, like it's a language, it's not a dialect. I'm so jealous. You guys have Z in your vocabulary. You're back. You don't have Z now. Vocabulary. Okay, like, you know, you know, alpha, now, alphabet. Yeah, so I speak that and I speak Igbo language. Igbo language. Then I speak and English. English, obviously. And now Korean. Korean. And Korean. Korean. Yeah. So don't ask me to say anything because my tongue is really bad. Koi vu koi say. Just um pu. Like if I say just um pu, it sounds like it go in my ear. So I don't even bother. Mm. You know. Yeah. That's yeah, but that's not small. I think it's it's something I think we tend to take for granted. Um, the fact that we are naturally bilingual, minimum. Many of us from um, non-Western countries, yes. we just we just assume. Yes, sir. 
we just take it for granted like it's not a big deal and you forget that there's literally exactly. lots of people who cannot speak anything other than english yep or the guy but, won't speak english as a whole so ask like and like know. even even if all you could speak was like Iji and english you're already bilingual <laughs> but like mm. you get, which is like so many nigerians but like you can speak yeah. four different languages and yeah and i i think i think it's easy to take for granted like how that changes just the way you think because you said something really great earlier on which is um that you can't really be interested in language without being interested in the culture of the people yeah. mm-hmm. um which connects for me to you know a, the, the idea that a language is actually a representation of a world view um so as an example um in yoruba the word for the children of your parents only references their age which we, when you know how Yoruba culture works, that doesn't surprise you because that's something that's very important, right? Like, the important thing about the children of your parents is are they older or younger than you, right? Whereas yeah. in in Igbo, the word for children of your parents is are they the children of your father or your mother? Yeah. Which, yeah. And that yeah. alone tells you something. Yeah. Do you get that yeah. alone tells you something about what is important to this culture? And from the little I know about Korean culture, you know, the fact that they have all the honorifics again tells you something about what is important in this culture in terms of is someone higher status or lower status than you or equal status. You know, so I'm curious, I'm curious like what what else you've noticed, sort of not just in Korea now, but just across your different languages that you speak. Um what you may what you've noticed or that you think maybe like it's easy to take for granted about what each of those languages you know how they've maybe like enriched your thinking or you the way you look at things because i think with each language comes extra perspectives on things okay if that makes sense yes it makes sense so for koreans koreans have this um this way of apologizing you know so when koreans yeah. want to say i am sorry please forgive me they will say i did wrong you know, <laughs> wrong. you know i i don't have any excuses i'm sorry that all i have to say is sorry you know you know something wow. like that sometimes they that feels like the apology people are always asking for in english that they never get they never get because sorry <laughs> you stepped on my toe sorry sorry you you snatched my husband sorry it's like you know two yeah, different yeah, stories like that but Koreans, they even go to the extent of saying, please kill me. I deserve to die. Yeah. I have done, I've sinned against you, you know. I've done something that you've never been of death, so, yeah. I, so there's a fully developed that. sense of of guilt and wrongness. Repent. It's yes, always I'm embed- really. embedded. It's almost like Catholic guilt. Yeah. Do you know, I was thinking yes, about this recently, yes. that the Yoruba word for sorry is not Daijin. actually, it's not Bele. Daijin. Or rather, the Yoruba way we express sorry when you're really upset someone, the thing we say is not kwele. Mm, the thing is, we say is, is don't be angry. Uh, been, and I was yeah, thinking about how me. that reflects that what you're really saying is you have every right to be angry with me. I'm please asking you please to waive that have. right. <laughs> so please not exercise your full <laughs> obligation and rights to anger in this moment. <laughs> is what you're really mm. saying. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And, and 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 that for me is like that acknowledgement of you actually have the right to be angry. Yeah. And it is only mm-hmm. I'm at your mercy now if you choose to not exercise it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny how in like I mentioned the word sorry. I think when I think of Korean language, I think of the expression of hand, which we've talked about. And I also think it's a very emotion for language because the way they have many words to express sorry. They also yeah. have for words for like I hate you, but like I soft hate you, but I really yeah. really hate you. And they have words for I love you, and mm-hmm. the love is I like, like you. you know I like you, and then I love you like we're together, like our soul is like one. I love mm-hmm. you, like your Mohammed. Mm-hmm. Like when you hear, I, I I hardly hear it being used except in like in Saguk Saguk dramas or like the historical dramas. That's where like, a king, you know, yeah, like, they're, they're very more formal and. So I think it's just, it goes around emotions. They're very good with emotions. Like you, that sometimes it's very hard for me to be able to transcribe what they're saying, translate what they're saying from Korean to English. Yeah, to, I can't yeah. explain it. I, there's not quite the words in English yet to be able to translate it. I might have a better luck with doing Korean to Yoruba translations. Yoruba is a language I speak. It's a Nigerian oh. language for you know our non-Nigerian listeners. And but then from Korean to English, sometimes it's lost in translation. 
<laughs> yes, it's not. It's, it's it doesn't usually capture the deep meaning in the words. Yeah. But sometimes we I do try to you know translate like that. So for example, when I, I once wronged my friend once, and when I I wanted to apologize, I said that I don't even deserve your forgiveness. You know mm. that I've done wrong. You know something like that. But please. Forgive me, you know, and I'm sorry that I have nothing else to say besides for as in that I'm sorry, yeah, you know. I really, I really liked you, you know. I, I love that point where you said that, like, I, I'm sorry that all I have to say is sorry. It's such a great <laughs> way like, to I apologize. Really I'm so I useless right know. now. Yeah, like, it captures the fact that words are all I have, but I recognize that words are not enough. It's beautiful. Yes. yes. So I used it for the guy, and he was like, Jesus, this guy, you're so intelligent. It's I too- said. <laughs> Like in that place, the Emma Binu, the Binu will just go away, right? The anger will just be um called off. So the Korean, like the there are deep ways of expressing emotions. Like it has really rubbed off on me. I feel like I I talk prettily. I don't know how to explain it. Like yeah, I forget, talk forget, really... I say, no, yeah, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. In English. Yeah, I can relate with that. Really I can relate with that. It helped yeah. it has helped build my emotional intelligence as a whole because a Korean and that language is good because you, almost like you got this key to an elite, you know, part of the world that you never really had access to. But a language that is as quite mm. as soft and as quite as deep as well as, as a Korean language, I'm actually softer emotionally because and, and I'm able to access my emotions, like the range of my emotions faster. And yeah. I've said that, and this is me just digressing a little bit. It, there was one song I listened to, and it's um, a father's. Um, uh, this guy from Sada guy, I always keep forgetting his name. Is it Kim Jun Ho? There's this song, um, Family Portraits. It was about his father, and I I I, oh. I listened to that song in Korean, and I broke down, and I called my father, and for the first time in how many years, I actually told him I love you. I'd never before that time. Oh been able like years of therapy and years of just trying to work through yeah. after watching and i and i keep going back so, like, to that emotions song, unlocked unlocked and the way he <laughs> the way he broke it down like looking at your father's image and that like, you're your father's image as well and it broke me down i was driving on the expressway and i just pulled you know to the side and i called my father and i said and, and that was all i said and i hung up and again korea helped me get to that now um before we round off there's this yeah. question i really want to ask you Neta. So as you know, there's an increasing interest and awareness about Korean culture in Nigeria. And I'm all for it, you know. People like you coming up with, you know, ways of, you know, showing just that, you know, multivary cultural um, expressions you have. Now, with the influx of TV shows on Netflix, for example, Squid Game was all about it. And Nigeria's got into it. I saw a lot of celebrity mm-hmm. pictures hosting like their Squid Game, Squid Game, you know, editions at home. Now, are you hopeful at the thought of potential collaborations between, say, Nollywood or even Nigerian um, music industry and their Korean um, counterparts? If yes, what potential collaborations have you imagined? Mm, so, Whiskey once said something about wanting to collaborate with BTS, and I was like, yeah, it should happen. Because, it's like, but, honestly, I, I, I would really like it if there was something like that. Because I really love Whiskey. But then, there, he's also like the powerhouse. Besides that, Bonner Boy is doing really greatly now. I feel like Whiskey is more popular right now, you know, in in the in no, the Whiskey world. No, Whiskey is definitely like you know, so the most popular. He's like uh, Michael Jackson. Yes, Bonner Boy is yes, more, more like our. Like, it's more like the artistic type. Our fella, yeah. Our our pride. Fella is right. You know? That's it. On the age as well, please. Um, that Whiskey has that advantage because it caters to like a much younger demographic, right? You're looking at 16, yes. 14 year old people, percent girls. Oh, yeah, Whiskey, Whiskey, but. I mean, thanks for. Uh, um, um, oh yes, yes, they're younger, of course. I mean, they're quite good. I don't know if you've listened to Sugar and um, um, Sai. They released the song just yesterday. That that. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it solo. On Honey, seventeen hours ago, the movie, the that song already had like twenty-four million views. Just as I last time when I checked it, and Sugar produced yeah, it. I'm not a fan. Cool. They're crazy. Those army fans, they're quite crazy. But wait, there's a question I have to ask you, which I think it would be an injustice. Okay. Will be, okay. I've seen some people talk about how, in, I've, seen, I've watched some Korean dramas when they talk about Africa. It's always like a dirty place, and sometimes the writers don't get it right. You know, they they think of Africa as you know, go to Africa is a hunger place and all that. And and I think 
some people have used that as a way to think that Koreans can be quite racist. And I get that. I'm not saying, you know, um, people can be racist, but that is where you're from. But why do you think for all the notoriety and so not notoriety, popularity and the momentum Nigerian stars have gained globally, there's yet to be that wide scale collaboration between the Nigerian, you know, um, big hits like Korea, like um, Whiskey and say like a Korean act. Why, why do you think there's been such a delay? I honestly can't say. I feel like, oh, so maybe it's because they are not, you know, you have to seek out these things. So, for example, WizKids management can decide to contact Big Hits, for example. You know, I feel like maybe it's because something like that has not happened or they have not deemed it necessary to do that. So maybe it's, because it's just us that are interested in those kinds of collaborations, you know, and the artists might not really be interested or something. I don't know. I can't really say this is exactly why these people have not collaborated. And Nigerians still think that Korean everything is cheesy. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that is why. They don't really take Korean anything seriously. Fair enough, fair enough. I think um, I think that's but, changing though because, yeah, yeah. and I'm saying that as the you know the Korean yeah, people here. are eating their words these days, <laughs> right? Because I, yeah. I the reason why I've seen a number of Korean shows, some recommended by Tolani, some recommended by other friends, some from social media. Um, obviously, I'm not really into like emotional type drama so much. Um, but like when it's things like Alice in Borderland Say somebody watching Pachinko What is that about emotion? No, no, no I mean the sort of love story stuff That a lot of people So a lot of people that I know that love Korean stuff Is the love story stuff they are all about That's And so that cute. doesn't really interest me It's like the Bridgertons of Korean of No, but family, the, we know. don't see naked bodies in Korean dramas Which is fine exactly. that, is, that is one of the reasons so I really yeah. like yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, but, so but where, where I'm, they, where I'm they going to is Stories, 16 episodes yeah. Not like 5 seasons just one no, but where, where, where I'm even going to is that I've I've enjoyed the other stuff, the the sci-fi type stuff, the horror oh, yeah, type yeah. stuff, mm-hmm. you know, like which so is home, not what I think a lot of Korean loving. So the funny thing is, I love my friends that love Korean stuff don't love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't love Sweet Home, but but you know, yeah. I I I I suppose where, where I was going anyway with the with the was just the idea of like how I think a lot of people don't consider it cheesy. I think people did. Um, but I, th- I think people don't as much anymore. Yeah, uh, post Squid Game, I feel. Post Squid Game, I feel. Yeah, Squid Game probably did a lot better. for that, actually. Yeah, yeah. The Squid Game was a global hit, like, and yeah. Yeah. not many Korean series. I mean, Kingdom was really good, but it didn't gain quite the reputation. As much, yes, as, as Squid, Squid Game. Game. And then Squid Game gave the lead way for Hellbound, too. Yes, 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 yes. Although that one didn't gain as much, but I know that this year I have a strong feeling that something bigger than Squid Game is gonna come. Cause Koreans, mm-hmm. one thing I like about them is that consistency. They never quite give up. Like you know, we've talked about that. So, um, how do you learn these days? Like, so I imagine you watch a lot of you know maybe YouTube shows or even K drama. Do you have like dedicated classes where you kind of sit down and you know the the old way of just you know putting pen to like you know a paper and then writing and how do you learn what are yeah, I, I, listen, I listen to language podcasts and i i i use textbooks okay. so i i have this intermediary and advanced grammar books and vocabulary so i'm also oh. studying for topics so i like i will study one page today maybe 10 vocabulary words or yeah. listen to a or watch a youtube video there that are teaching vocabulary words write down listen you know repeat after them blah 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 like i still yeah. just learn normally just i'm now learning more advanced words you know yeah do you have any plans going forward to do anything with it or like obviously i know you're interested in it but do you have any plans to do anything with it like on a professional level do anything with korean with you yeah, want to teach language, them maybe or with languages there, in general like teach them, work in there them. in korea yes I, like I, I i don't think i want to live live in korean like just how like how you said you are settling in canada right now i don't think i want to do that maybe i want to go to korea for like maybe three years or four years but i don't want to live there you know forever you don't or want something. to settle there basically but you want to spend time yes i don't want to settle there. yes but i want to spend some time there yes yeah. and so, I, I could also work with you know an english korean um what is it called company like samsung for example yeah okay 
Um, when I started learning Korean, a lot of my friends were, they just thought, oh, it's just this new fad. It's going to fade soon. Give her time. But because I, I tend to pick interests and hobbies, you know, here and there. And sometimes they fade away. Sometimes they don't. But I think eventually they realize that, oh, my God, this girl is for real, for real. So I've become like the shepherd, like the um, the, um, the Korean missionary as it were, when they have questions about it. But I would like to you that the earlier part of it was quite, it was full, full of a lot of struggles and insecurities and I, I say that because I remember the first time I was supposed to record you couldn't make it and then you sent me a message way after that you weren't quite confident to come on board and I've gone through that as well and I could relate to that was why how I was why I responded to you in the way I did like I understand and I think it's something we should you know explore so I guess my question along that line would be how do you rise above that feeling of being stupid when it comes to acquiring a second language that is not within the script of languages that you're you know used to like English French or Igbo Mm, so um, I'm I'm an advocate of reading books on how to study languages, like how to learn a foreign language, for example, before I will get into learning a foreign language. So I've read this book about cognitive um cognitive what? I forgot to know. Like, about like your cognitive skills that you can use to acquire more languages. So like when they were trying to teach how you know you should maybe have a child ment- a mentality of a child you know so children when a child tries to you know climb something they will fall they will carry the table keep it back again they will try to climb it again you know something like that so i adopted that kind of mentality like you know i beg it's just me repeating some stupid words and before you know it you are you are better you know before you know it you can communicate with me on so that was <laughs> that was just what I used to rise above it. But at first, when I started learning, I was not feeling stupid. Actually, I was actually really impressed, you know, with how I was learning. Like if I learn a phrase and tomorrow I, I get to remember it, it was really fun. Though it was quite challenging because I didn't know anyone that was learning Korean. I didn't know where I could get resources for learning. So just like tr- being thrown in the middle of the ocean and I have to swim out by myself. But then, because of this, like, because of the video that I, I won the speaking competition, and because I now came, like, had more social media presence, I then met other people along the way, you know, and learned how to get resources and all that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Neka. This has been this has been a lot of fun. Um, and no problem. Yeah. Pleasure is mine. I, I I'm, I'm actually really excited to see what happens with you next because I feel like. I feel like so there's going to be more coming from you and coming from everything you're doing. Um, I yes, I think so too, because I feel more confident these days in my Korean actually. So yeah, I I mean for me, I just I get the sense that you feel like what you're doing is not really a big deal, which is wild to me because because I think everything you're doing is is amazing, and yes. that is wild to me because like just Are listening you to you. Yeah, because it's like it's like it's almost like it's almost like right now to me, yeah, like those people who in school who are like, oh, I'm not really doing well in school. I, I'm just getting ninety nine percent. It's like, what are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! Thank you so much. That that that's a big compliment. Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I I and I'm like honestly, I'm I'm just blown. I'm I'm blown by the fact that you're you're doing all of this and. And and in a sense, you know, I think the the that sense of, you know, clearly you have so much you're trying to achieve with with language and with culture and with just yourself as a person, um, and I guess that's why it feels like because you're aware of all that you're trying to do next, maybe you're sort of not really paying a lot of attention to all that you've done already. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think you're amazing, and and I, it's been Thank a real you. privilege <laughs> and an honor, just. You know, all right, thank you. Getting thank to you. learn all of this, and and I'm like right now, I'm just questioning my life choices. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like what have I been doing myself? I've not even learned any language or anything, you know, besides the ones I grew up with. It's okay. Um, so it's yeah, not thank too you late. so much for this. It's not too late. I'm a day. It's not too late. <laughs> So we've talked about, I've learned about Korean language and the culture and just how 
emotionality. So if you're speaking in, in English, so I'm going to just say some things in Korea that I think is going to really hit at your, you know, your heartstrings. So, Chincha, with the podcast, Wajo Shoso, Kamsamida, Manaso, Bangawayo, with the podcast, the Wajo Shoso, and Numbango, to Itamion, Cook Alo Jusayo, Kamsam Kamsamida, Chincha Kamsamida. All right, everyone. This has been Neka on the show, and it's really been nice, you know, getting to hear about her. Oh, so what? So what I just said in Korean, sorry, was um, I told her that it was nice for her, thanking her for coming on the show. It was a pleasure and an honor meeting her, and uh, if there are more ways we can help her on the show, she, she should let us know. And we hope that whatever languages you are learning, you have found some form of courage to keep exploring that. Remember, you cannot adequately learn a language without exploring other parts of their culture. And we just hope that, you know, you got one or two things from this episode. So on behalf of everyone on the show, um, on the team, Inaka, thank you so much. And we hope you have a thank good you. day. And this has been the Monsible Podcast with Mo and... Miami Day. <laughs> Don't haru de say all.